I can keep talking. Uh, I'm really bad at talking on the spot when people ask me to do this because my brain always goes blank. Cause I'm like, oh gosh, now I have to talk about something. I'm not even sure what to do. So, yep, this is me talking. So that way we can get the levels adjusted. <laughs> um, alrighty. Well, hello. I am Hope from Hope for TTRPGs. The Game Master Certification Organization presents. So for the dice stacking tournament with DM Chronicles, we raised uh, $2,000 for Jasper's Game Day, which is a uh, suicide prevention and awareness program for TTRPGs. An absolutely amazing, amazing, amazing charity. My mom is a fantastic mom. She's always been super supportive of me no matter what I've done. She's always been there for me. So, so, so kind and loving and has the biggest heart of anyone I've met. Some other people like to give me um, the role of like TTRPG mom. It makes me feel happy, I guess, <laughs> in, this, in the easiest sense. Um, it makes me, I, I like that title a lot because it makes me feel like I'm doing good with that supportive role. Um, you know, because when we have great moms like I do, um, some of the first words that come to mind with mom are like supportive and kind and loving and able to help other people feel those feelings has been a lot of fun. Like, I like supporting people. I like taking care of people. When I go out, I always have um, a giant bag or my backpack full of anything and everything you can need. And so that was kind of the first time that I got called, like, the mom friend of a group is because when I was out with my friends, if anybody needed anything, I had it. And so it's just being able to help people and support people in that way. Um, I think it's kind of fun to be considered, you know, the, the mom friend of the group and the mom of the TTRPG family. I'm from Nebraska. Um, she was born and raised in Nebraska. My dad was born and raised in Iowa and then came to Nebraska, and we've lived here all our lives. I uh, grew up in the southern side, and now we're up in the northeast corner, uh, my husband and I are. Right, so I was on a podcast called The Adventuring Guild, um, and that was my first step into... Uh, TTRPG media and media management. I think we started, gosh, it's been a little while. I think we started out with the homebrew review. So we would see homebrew online and we contact the original creators and we'd be like, Hey, we want to use this on our podcast. We want to make characters on this and do like a mini review session. So what we ended up doing was we'd take our characters and we usually had like a theme and we'd play them at the 5th, 10th, 15th, and 20th level. And so we'd have those four, like, episodes per group. And then we'd go into it saying, like, hey, this is what I'm playing, and here are some things that I'm excited about for this character and some really cool mechanics. And then at the end of the episode, we'd say, hey, this is how those things turned out. This is what we liked about it. You know, these were some, like, bouncing things that we thought about and then get excited for what's coming next level. And so we did that quite a bit, and that was a lot of fun. And I think that was really substantial in the beginnings of me wanting to help support TTRPG content creators because we were sitting there just month after month, year after year, day after day, seeing all these amazing homebrew creations and just really wanting to support those people and what they were making. And then that podcast, uh, on top of the homebrew review, we started doing a couple of actual play campaigns. And those are really fun because we'd have uh, people from anywhere and everywhere jumping in to play with us. So it was an international group. Yeah, we've got a little over 200 active online at this moment. So yeah, I guess that is kind of that is kind of a lot. <laughs> um, I guess when it comes to, I guess it is kind of weird to put it that way because I don't necessarily see myself as in charge of a group or like the head of it or a leader. Um, I mean, I am the person who runs Hope for DTRPGs, so. 
I, I guess that's the way I like to put it is I don't like to say I'm a leader or, you know, in charge or the head of anybody. I did start up this project and I do head it up and try to keep things going. But I think when it comes to the concept of being in a leadership role, handling that is honestly a lot of delegation and setting boundaries. A big thing with a community that is centered on this is that I cannot do this alone. This is not me. It's everybody involved when it comes to supporting people and, you know, building up that support for other projects and other people. I can't do that alone as one person. It's a collective group of all these amazing people that are just so kind and want to help everybody succeed. So that's a big part of it. I absolutely love my moderator team. Without them, I don't know how I'd be able to keep up with the Discord, especially with all the different time zones. So having those moderators to delegate to, especially in the Discord, just that way we always kind of have eyes going around, just making sure that, you know, no bots got in and nothing's getting out of hand, no matter what hour of the day it is, is fantastic. They are an amazing backboard for ideas and uh, just advice. I go to them all the time when I get a new idea or asking for new ideas or just wanting some feedback on different things. Uh, I go to them first thing every single time because they're always so amazing and have such a great perspective and view of things across the board so it's no longer just my perspective i can see how it looks from different sides of the ttrpg community i can see it from different time zones different all this stuff so they're fantastic for helping me uh do this um otherwise i guess you know having a platform with quite a few people it's honestly It's a lot about, um, as I kind of said before, setting boundaries. I make sure that the expectations are there. So whether it's on Discord or on Twitter, you know, when any kind of like toxic or hurtful things start being said, um, it's an immediate step in, you know, talk to that person one on one and just kind of be like, hey, you know, notice this. Just wanted to see where you're coming from. Make sure that everything's good. And just kind of doing that first can really help, has just really made the difference down the line in managing, um, you know, just managing it and keeping an eye on everything that's been going on in my spaces. As educators, I think that teaching is an amazing thing. Um, You know, you can get really far on talent, but whether you have someone teaching you or you search for new knowledge yourself, you have to find new knowledge. And I think that teachers are a great way to help you find those resources, help you understand them and help you develop those skills. So, you know, the whole saying of if you can't do, you teach um, sometimes comes from a negative perspective, saying like, oh, well, if you're not good enough to be a music performer then you just teach and it's like no that's not generally correct uh when you go through a music education program you have to be a performer you have to be able to uh go up to those levels of performance it's actually part of our grading system and something you have to do to get your degree so you can you can definitely do it but i think it's more of a where your passions lie you know uh We all kind of look up to the people who, in this situation, are doers, you know, those performers. You know, we all kind of look up to, you know, your favorite pop or rock star, and we think, oh, that's so cool, you know. We love what they're doing. They're creating this stuff. And, uh, you know, you look at classical musicians, too, and, I mean, we look up to them, too, because they put in the hard work for that. But behind all those people are great educators. Uh, I think a cool one that a lot of at least a lot of younger-ish people would know, um, is Panic at the Disco. Um, The lead singer for that group, uh, he actually did a really cool project where he went back to his, I I don't remember, his grade school or whatever school he went to um, for his general education. He went back there and helped out with the arts program because he said that was a big thing for him, was his teacher 
gave him those resources and allowed him and helped him to grow into the musician that he is today. And you can go back to classical music and look at it, too, uh, if you want to go very, very far back. You know, um, all of the great composers like Mozart, Bach, Beethoven, you know, they all kind of studied what each other were doing. You know, they always looked at the person who was the greatest composer before them and learned from them. They took a lot of um, apprentice apprenticeships with them. So when it comes to if you those who can't do teach, I generally don't agree with it too much because I think that honestly to do both, you know, you have a little bit to do either one. You have to do a little bit of both. Um, there are some great performers who just don't have the skills to teach, and that's not bad. And there are some great teachers that don't have the skills to perform on that crazy level. But I think each has a really important role to play with each other because without each other, they wouldn't succeed. And I think that does parallel into kind of what we're doing here in TTRPGs. And I think that kind of relies honestly a little bit to the game master and the player. You know, that you can say that there's some very different skill sets. You know, the game master is kind of seen as the leader of the group. And you can, there's kind of a mentality of they might be the doers in this um, analogy. And the players could honestly be kind of, the teachers in the analogy in a way because you have a game master who you know people look up to the game masters which is really cool because you guys do a lot you know you're setting the stage you're performing and as the players you know we're learning a lot from the game master but at the same time as players without our game master we can't play and as a game master without players you can't game master so I think that's just a really cool interlocking relationship that, you know, almost anybody can kind of have within their groups. So when it comes to art in the music sense, I think that 100% on performing for myself. Um, everybody else has their own definitions and can see the ways that they interlock and their own relationships that they've had and all that. But for me, the art of music is kind of the art of making it. And again, I just don't honestly do that too much. Uh, my main instrument is percussion. So I love playing drums and um, like mallet instruments like marimba and xylophone. Those are my favorites. And I'm not one to improvise that much. I like taking uh, music that other people have written and figuring out how to play it. That's really fun. And I've learned a lot of dedication, persistence, and patience from that. Um, then you have the art of education, um, and that actually is definitely an art form. Um, you learned a lot of personal skills. Um, a big thing that I always think about when I'm teaching is trying to teach to all the different styles. Everybody learns differently, just like everybody interacts differently. And as a teacher, you have to try and make sure that you are um, providing an education for your students in the best way for them. And so you have to keep in mind all these different possibilities. You have to find all the interlocking qualities, you know, just really doing what you can to help your students in a way that helps them, but everybody's different. And so, you know, that kind of overlays into other things because uh, while working with the art of, I guess, media management and community management, you know, you have to be thinking a lot about other people. You have to know those interpersonal skills, being able to connect with people, and being able to be a good listener and, uh, you know, just giving giving an ear, giving good feedback just being honestly just a general kind of almost nice person, just really get, keeping an open mind for other people um, is really important in the art of, I guess, community and management and media management. And that is definitely a skill that I think I grew a lot from, from an education side. Um, other skills is honestly just being able to track analytics, which is a big thing that I did not know 
was so prominent in media management and community management. So putting out like whether it's events or a post or something and being able to track um, like how well it's doing, but also keeping up on what's happening in the community around you and staying, I guess, relevant in all of that is really interesting. And that was something that I think I've gained most of that knowledge from, from TTRPGs online. I guess one cool thing has been that I have met a lot of uh, music makers for TTRPGs, and that's been really cool. I've been able to listen to their stuff and uh, leave some fun reviews that I guess without my degree, I wouldn't have known some of that background knowledge of what it's like to compose music for TTRPGs. But I personally don't compose too much myself. <laughs> uh, going into music, I much more enjoy helping others to make music than composing or making music myself. So I started just on Twitter as I really enjoyed social media management. And I just started with the idea that I could help other people who are creating TTRPG content, whether it's podcasts, streams, homebrew content, um, articles, anything. Um, just kind of helping to support them by giving encouragement, my time, um, a little bit of promotion, you know, retweeting their stuff, commenting on it, liking it, just really trying to help and be supportive of them. And that ended up being a really great thing. Uh, a lot of people really liked the idea that, hey, you can just support someone and it doesn't have to have any tie-ins. It doesn't have to be monetized. You don't have to do anything to get anything. And so uh, with that Twitter, it we started making a pretty great community there. And shortly, I think only a week or two after having the Twitter, we started our Discord community, which is something that's really close to my heart. Uh, I've met so, so many amazing people through our Discord. We have channels for everything. Um, it started out as a general chat and self-promotion channels. So it's a great hub for um, people to come in and promote their stuff. So when you're streaming, when you post the social media pages, when you've got cool stuff coming up, you can drop in and post it. And um, as a group, you know, we see it and then we go and we help support you as much as we can, which is absolutely fantastic. And that kind of grew into um, we have workshop and resource channels now. So we have channels for media marketing advice, um, for gaining engagement, um, for advice on advice and feedback on your homebrew content, all of that. And so it's a really supportive community of people just wanting to help each other out. And um, some of my favorite things that have come from it is we all kind of follow the saying of when one of us wins, we all win. When we support one person, we all get better. And it is so true. Um, I think a big thing that happened in the beginning is we started getting a lot of Twitch streamers. And so we were able to kind of create an awesome little community of people rating each other, um, giving advice, just supporting each other, dropping into each other's chats. And that created such an amazing community. And uh, some of the people who have been absolutely amazing and kind of taken the head on that um, are some of our moderators. A huge shout out to them. Um, I believe Maka from Check D's Out. I think he was one of the very first moderators for the channel. And since then, uh, Hope for TTRPGs and Check D's Out have been really big on promoting each other, supporting each other, basically sponsoring each other, which is absolutely fantastic. And then we've got um, Emil from Double DM. He has a podcast, and so we've been supporting him, and he's been great. He works as a moderator for Maka's uh, stream team that he's a part of. And so it's just a really great community of people helping each other out, whether you're a streamer, a podcaster, whatever. You know, we just really want to help each other. And we were able to take that. Since we started on Twitter, 
made a Discord community, we were able to kind of heighten the Twitter community as well as we started the TTRPG family hashtag. So by working together and just becoming so close and invested in each other's projects because we all loved what each other was doing and we all had the same goals, you know, we're we're really that TTRPG family. We 100% believe it, you know, and it all spanned off of that beginning mentality of um, when one of us wins, we all win. So let's all just support each other and bring each other up. And when you do that, you make a family. And so now we've had that on Twitter, and it has just been fantastic. We have a ton of different things that we do there as well. We've got um, a lot of people who participate in Follow Friday, so just working really hard to help um, get people out there, um, learning about new accounts, helping them get started, you know, self-promotion Saturdays, just helping each other out with that promotion and just getting our stuff out there. We've got Support Sunday, Searching Sunday, where it's a day entirely dedicated just to, hey, let us know what we can do to help you out this week, whether it's collaborations, retweeting something, liking something, giving advice, just anything. And it's just been so amazing to see this little corner of the Internet just carved out for such an amazing community that just keeps growing and growing. And so that has just been so amazing and we kind of almost do a little bit of everything and so it's it's just a lot of fun and it's just so fun and exciting to see where it's come from and where it's going there are some absolutely amazing groups that are doing some amazing headway specifically for minority groups and women in ttrpgs And there's some amazing just podcasts out there that have um, female identifying and women players and GMs. So it's kind of just a matter of going out there and looking for them and just not letting them be drowned out by some of the negative members um, in the TTRPG universe. So it's really important to make sure that you're keeping time to yourself and making sure that you're taking care of yourself so that way you still have water that you can help give to other people. So I think that's uh, a really big thing that has helped me the most throughout everything, whether it's, uh, you know, community management, media management, being a player, trying to get into game mastering. It's just knowing that you have to take care of yourself first. Um So that way you can help others. Like, you know, there is a big demand for game masters out there, which is one of the reasons why I've been recently looking, getting into it. But again, that's a, that's a big project to get into. I mean, there's a lot to learn and there are some amazing resources out there, but you know, that's, it's a time commitment to be able to prep a session for people, especially if you do it every week. I mean, that's a lot of prep. And right now I don't have the, I don't have the water to give to that right now. And it's a journey of self-care to be able to say that because, you know, I, I want to be able to help everybody. I want to be like, oh, you want to play TTRPGs? Well, I'll run a session for you, which is great, but I can't do that if I'm not taking care of myself. So just self-care has been a big thing that has helped the most. And I see it a lot with other content creators. It's so easy to get burnt out because there are so many people in the world that you want to help and that you want to reach out to and that you want to run games for. And you just can if you're just exhausted. <laughs> so just taking time for myself has been honestly probably one of the biggest things that have helped me the most. Um, then when it comes to trying to be a better player at the table, um, Honestly, I've just been really fortunate to be in some really great groups that have led by example. So some things that I'm doing to try to make myself a better player at the table is making sure that I am giving space to other players as well. Uh, A lot of it can kind of get tied into, like, improv groups, and when they say yes and. So it's always really fun I think and and is helping me grow as a player to to keep that in mind when I'm playing and in scenarios with other people to when I have those moments go yes 
and in a way that includes somebody else. Like, not specifically those words, but, like, if you're having a moment, like, you know, you're doing some awesome backstory stuff, you know, think about the room around you and see if you can't interact with someone. So that way, instead of a monologue where it's just all about I and all about me, if you can find a way to, like, bring another player, whether it's, you know, a conversation behind the scenes, tying them into your backstory can be fun, but also just in those moments, just, like, looking at another player and just, like, tying them into that moment, whether you just say, like, how would you feel in this situation? You know, asking them a question about their character um, can make a huge difference and can really create some amazing storytelling between players. And I always appreciate that because as what I honestly am kind of a more quiet player that has definitely started to change. But, uh, you know, being a quiet player at a table can be kind of hard when you're with a group of a lot of uh, more excitable people, you know, those who are really great at entertaining and performing. Being a more quiet player can be pretty intimidating because, you know, they're doing great stuff. But what has been most impactful for me is when those uh, more outgoing players, like when they're having those amazing epic moments, and then all of a sudden they throw something my way and give me a chance to, like, hop in. Even if it's just, like, with one sentence, I mean, that makes the table so much more fun for me. And I've heard the same way to other people. Like, even when I've done it as a more quiet player, um, I've heard one of my favorite moments I keep dear and near to me was in a one shot that I did where afterwards, uh, with it was only, like, one line that I said. And one of the more outgoing players that I looked up to was like, when you said that, that was so cool because you tied me into that. Like, you you connected us in a way, and that just made the whole story, you made this whole moment. It was with one sentence that I said, and I just thought that was the coolest thing because anybody can do it, whether it's with one sentence or just one little description. If you can tie somebody else into that moment with you, it can be so fun. And again, it doesn't even have to be big things. It can be even just like, you know, you throw a glance at this player, you know, you give them a, a look, you know, even something like that can really help, I think, make the table more, more fun for everybody. And that's something that I've been trying to improve on as a player is just to do that more. Because for me, I really like that side of the table is when we all get to connect together. And so I think that makes it a lot of fun for me, and I hope it makes it fun for other people, too. So that's something I try to do as a player, um, role-play-wise. Otherwise, more um, mechanic-wise, um, I think as a player, um, a good thing that has really helped me is making sure that, especially in combat, because combat can take a long time in tabletops, is to try and plan ahead. Um, paying attention and strategizing while other people are doing things and starting to create my turn so that way when it is my turn, when it's a turn-based scenario, um, I'm kind of ready or I have something has been pretty helpful, especially when, you know, we are streaming or podcasting, you know, time is kind of of the essence. So that has been something mechanically that has helped a lot. Um, going into uh, exploring the world of game mastering, looking for resources has been a huge help. Sword and Source has an amazing guide to game mastering and um, I believe D&D 5e Basics. It's an amazing, all-encompassing guide. And that was honestly probably the number one resource that I found from trying to get into game mastering that has really helped me improve. Um, it covers everything from, uh, you know, prepping a session to what to do at the beginning of the session, at the end of the session, all of these things. And it was super duper helpful. And just honestly, I, without that guide, I don't know how I would have ran a one shot. <laughs> I have no idea. So finding different resources um, can be super helpful, I think, all around. trying to say like what a better self is can be so hard because we're all really hard on ourselves 
And so, like, you know, I when I hit with that question, like, I want to say all these things, but it's like, you know what? Deep down, they're not necessarily true, Um, you know. So it's hard to, like, find one. Cause, again, I want to be better by just generally being better for everybody else, whether that's finding better ways to support people, you know, finding ways to organize events better, just trying to find ways to, again, just help other people. Um, you know, but that's going to be a lifelong journey. So that's a, a better self, I guess. Um, you know, then there's a lot of harder and darker things to try to tackle with that statement. You know, being a better self, you know, I'd like to not be so worried all the time about, you know, these hard situations, you know, not being so worried about supporting other people in a bad way you know like well if i'm not supporting everyone you know like those thoughts you know like well what if i drop the ball what if i didn't connect with this person enough what if i didn't help them as much as i could have getting rid of those kind of thoughts would also be part of a better self because again at that point i'd be better supporting other people and also better supporting myself um oh goodness yeah, that, that's just that's just really hard because we all we all think that a better self I think is like I'm thinking more of this in perfect terms. I, you know, I think of a better self as uh, is a better perfect me, and that doesn't have to be a perfect me. It just means that a better me is someone who's still trying to improve. I'm still trying to improve on the space that I'm making for other people. I'm still trying to improve on the relations that I'm making with other people. We've also been able to provide a little bit of financial support to some creators, which has been a lot of fun. Um, Hope for TTRPGs does have a Patreon um, that is geared towards supporting the Hope for TTRPGs community. Um, all of that goes straight back into the TTRPG community. So uh, some of the perks include promotion, because I think that's something that uh, Hope for TTRPGs can help offer but it's more geared towards people who just want to be amazing and help this community grow. So we have like tiers for shout outs, for reviews. We have a special spotlight streamer schedule. We just created a tier for sponsorship, uh, which puts their logo on any stream overlays that uh, we do my banners like on social media and they get special shout outs on whatever I do uh, when it's asked for shout outs, you know, when I stream my Saturday games, uh, you know, we always do like, okay, what are we up to this week? Uh, my sponsors get a special shout out there. And so that has been great because through that and then also through um, coffee or coffee. So K O F I um, through that, that one is also a great um, donation platform um, through that. We've been able to, uh, through those funds combined, we've been able to buy from many, many, many small creators. We've been able to donate to a lot of other people's um, coffee accounts and just being able to donate to other people who've really needed it to help some of these smaller businesses get up off of the ground. And that has been a really fun way uh, to help support people. But again, that's another thing where it's really all comes down to the community. You know, the more support we see through that, the more that we can get together, the more that we can support other people in that way. And so that has been absolutely fantastic and fun to be able to support people that way because it's, it's the world we live in. Um, and it's just been so fun just all around, whether it's supporting them financially or, you know, just supporting them by talking with them and helping give advice and helping promote their stuff has been so much fun. I am not a game master. Uh, I really enjoy being a player. I, when I started playing TTRPGs, that was kind of one of the first big things that I did that was, uh, I guess, in the nerd and geek realm. I loved to read before, I loved watching movies, but my house was not very big on video games or any other kind of gaming. And so when I first started playing D&D, &D, 
、uh, that was like my first introduction to what tabletop games could be, and fell in love with it. But it's been a long journey to figure out as a player what I liked.、Um, so just getting more comfortable, just like with role playing and just discovering how to like fill those roles, has been a very long journey and a very fun one. And I feel like I'm still growing a lot. I have recently started to look at becoming a DM. I ran a short little one shot、um, a couple weeks ago, just to kind of get a feel for what it's like to be in the dungeon master seat, and it's pretty cool.、Uh, again, I'm, it's so new. There's so much that goes on that as a player you don't think about. You don't think about how you have to write the story for everybody and. You know, include everyone. Make sure everyone's having a good time, and make sure that you're telling the story that you want to tell, as well as allowing your players to tell a story and to feel included, as well as also just remembering all the rules and creating what comes next. And so, just recently started to get into that, and it's definitely a lot to look at, as you know, someone who's only recently gotten into being a player. Oh, you can keep talking.、Uh, I'm really bad at talking on the spot. When-